Last time we were uh, almost finishing this probability boosting application and uh, before that we finished concentration uh, inequality. So, we did Markov, Chebyshev and then finally Chernoff. Right? Chernoff has the strongest assumption and then the strongest result, exponential decay of the probability. So, using that Suppose there is an algorithm A which uh, on any input gives the wrong answer with a chance less than one third. So, how can you make this uh, error probability extremely small, let us say 1 over 2 raise to n. Okay, so, the success probability will be like 99.9999 percent. How do you do that? How do you go from 67 percent to 99.99 percent? So, we do it by repetition, repeat the, repeat the algorithm independently m times, m is yet to be fixed and then you output the majority vote. Okay, so, you have m yeses and noes and you take the majority. So, here you could assume that uh, m is odd. Okay, so, uh, there will be uh, some th either yes or no in the majority. So, whatever it is you output that. So, now let us understand or let us analyze the, the error probability. So, s is the random variable which counts the number of correct answers. If uh, the answer correct answer is yes, then how many yeses were obtained, right? So, that expectation is 2m by 3. Uh, this is simply by linearity of expectation, right? Every experiment two third you will get the correct answer. So, you get 2m by 3 and uh, now this uh, new algorithm AM will be wrong if the number of correct answers is strictly smaller than half, okay? It is in minority. So, the correct answer has gone in minority, what is the chance of that? So, m by 2 means uh, actually 3 fourth of the expectation which means that delta is 1 by 4, okay, 1 minus 3 by 4 and this probability by uh, Chernoff is e raise to the expectation which is minus 2m by 3 times delta square by 2. right which is 1 by 32. So, you get e raise to minus m by 48. So, what uh, what should m be? Remember you wanted error to be 2 raise to minus n, right? So, you pick m to be 48 n. So, this means that uh, repeating a m equal to 48 n times gives uh, a decay of e raise to minus n, right? So, this is a huge decay. So, if you are looking at uh, input of size 100, then this is the decay of 2 raise to minus 100 or even close to 3 raise to minus 100, right? So, this is uh, a neg negligible probability now for the error. So, that is why majority vote works very well. and. Uh, independent experiment, so you can apply Chernoff bound. So, needless to say, this trick of probability boosting is very useful in randomized algorithms. In practice, So, it is not just uh, in theory, but actually you can get very almost precise 
almost exact algorithms by this probability boosting. Of course, there will still be some chance of error, but it will be extremely small. Okay, you can you can count on the result basically. Fine. So till now, you we did a lot of theory on uh, on concentration inequalities. And uh, you can apply it in uh, various ways. So, we applied it to, uh, to deduce this uh, law of uh, large numbers, right. You learnt about variance and you learnt about probability boosting. So, let us take a break now with a nice example. with an interesting computer science example. Uh, to do with servers and clients. So, in CS applications, so multi-server there are scenarios where there are many servers and many clients are trying to access them. Has uh, millions of clients trying to access the servers. Okay, so, there are many servers and there are many clients. Clients number is huge. So, now the question is what is the load on a server? By which of course, we mean expected load. Could it also be millions? Or could it be much smaller? So, we will show that surprisingly this load on a on one server or if you look at the max load on any server, that will be actually significantly smaller than the number of clients. Okay, so, if clients behave in a random way, then they, the actually load will be distributed across the servers. So, let us do this. So, this will make you learn two important tools. Uh, union and factorial estimates. Okay, so, you will see two estimates which are quite uh, important in many applications. Let us first prove, in fact, just note down that uh, if you are interested in an event E, in probability space omega is the sample space, P is the probability uh, distribution function. So, of course, you want to estimate probability of E. So, what you can try is to break it up into uh, many events that are simple, but there uh, the main condition you want is their union should be E. So, express E 
as a union of easier events E i let us say n of them and they may not be disjoint. Okay, so, union of easier events that is what you want to do and they may also be overlapping, but the point main point is that this their union is equal to E, it is not a partition. So, this is different from partition formula. Okay, so, then what happens is probability of E is smaller than sum of the probability of E i's. Okay, now, this will be an equality. So, equality if and only if E i's are disjoint. Otherwise, it will be an inequality because if E i is overlap, then uh, you have to subtract something to get to the correct event E, right? This so that was our inclusion exclusion principle. Let me not say if and only if. Let me just say if. So if E i's are disjoint, then you will have equality. Otherwise, you have this upper bound. But this can be good. Even upper bound can be enough, right? You don't want exact probability. You just want to see the decay, which is. Uh, further smaller than n times the max probability here. Okay, so, as long as you understand all these events E i, you know the maximum. So, that n times the maximum is your probability of E upper bound, fine. So, what we will show is this theorem. So, let n clients randomly access n servers so with high probability max load on the servers is uh, 6 log of n by log log n. Let us call this expression L. So, this is essentially a logarithm of n, right? the number of clients. The clients are n, but with very high probability actually very few of them will come to a server. Okay, they, the randomness will actually try to distribute them and we are giving a, this, this precise quantitative estimate which is log n further smaller by log log n factor. Okay, so, this can be for n million this can be extremely small. So, the load gets highly distributed. Okay, so, let us try to prove this. Okay, this should be a bit surprising. The point here is that this is uh, exponentially smaller than number of clients. Okay. So, that is why it is surprising that why is there a log? Why not uh, something even smaller or something bigger? Okay, so, proof will be actually quite nice and simple using this, uh, these two estimates. So, let us define E to be the event that some server has greater than L clients. and E j be the event that this happens with j h server. Okay. 
now obviously goes without saying that e is equal to the union of ej but this is not a disjoint uh, union because many of the ejs may have actually simultaneously more than l clients right but at least you know from the union principle that probability of e will be less than equal to n times the probability of e1 these probabilities will actually all be equal right uh, clients will not we are assuming that the clients will not know about the server so they will not prefer one over the other so these probabilities are all equal and uh, hence the probability of uh, some server having more than l clients is just n times what happens on the first server so let us calculate that or at least estimate it so probability of e1 is uh, the probability that server 1 has i clients for i greater than l right these are uh, disjoint events so you can sum it up so by partition formula so let's let's evaluate this so that is uh, l less than i and i less than equal to n the first server can have at most n clients so you want probability of it having i clients right so which i clients that's n choose i ways times uh, these have to choose server 1 so that is probability 1 by n i times and the remaining have to exclude server 1 so that is 1 minus 1 by n to the n minus i they have to go somewhere else the other n minus i okay so this expression is uh, less than equal to let's write n choose i as 1 1 minus 1 by n 1 minus i minus 1 by n divided by i factorial and let's write uh, 1 minus 1 by n just upper bounded by 1 which is smaller than uh, i mean this numerator is still a fraction right 1 minus 1 by n times these things is a fraction so it's less than 1 so if you have essentially 1 over l factorial then 1 over l plus 1 factorial and so on so this is uh, smaller than n by l factorial right that is the bound you get and which means that probability of e so e was this uh, bad event that so that max load is more than l the probability of bad event is then smaller than n square by l factorial right that is where we are so we have to now compute l factorial how do we do that so here comes uh, sterling's formula or sterling's estimate so this says that uh, l factorial is uh, very close to l by e to the l where e is this uh, base of uh, log right it's 2.78 close to 3 so think of e as close to 3 it's like l to the l times square root of 2 pi l Okay, this is an amazing formula because it is it involves both e and pi, and gives you estimates you l factorial. So, if you want to see why this is true, you can look at a uh, standard reference for Stirling's estimate. It's very, it's very famous. 
Okay, so now going back to factorial for this particular L. So L remember was a 6 log n by log log n, right? So what you get is uh, L factorial is around or we only want to prove that it is uh, large. So L factorial is large at least uh, it is log n by log log n, right? L by E, E is around 3 or even smaller. So 5 by 3 we ignore and we raise it to L times square root of 2 pi L which is 2 raised to L times log of log n minus log log n times square root of 2 pi L. Okay, so we take the base to the exponent and apply a log and then take difference. So numerator is essentially L times log log n, this is what you have to understand. This is the main term, okay, this is where the action is happening times L. So what do you get is uh, multiply L with log log n, so you are left with 6 log n. We can reduce it, make it 5 log n to be safe. So you get 2 raised to 5 log n times square root of 2 pi L, right, which is at least n to the 5. That is what we have learned. In fact, it is more than this but we will be satisfied then to the 5 because what you get is probability of E is less than one over n cube. Okay, so what you have learnt is uh, load on each server is uh, almost always because 1 over n cube is an extremely small probability, right? If n was uh, even 1000, uh, you are looking at uh, 1 over 10 to the 9. So this is an extremely low probability. So in with extremely high probability, this will not happen and thus uh, max load will be only L or below L. So load on each server is almost always smaller than 6 log n by log log n, right? So exponentially smaller, which I already said. So it is exponentially smaller than n, right? So this was a nice uh, uh, application of probability and you learned some new tools which help in uh, estimation, also in estimating binomial numbers like n choose i. You may also play with this by changing the number of clients. So you can say there are m clients and n servers, okay, servers may be fewer and then what happens? How much is the load? How does, so does the load balance and how much is the max load? You can look at those questions. So let us now shift gears and start a new theory which will be stochastic processes. So till now we have focused only on a one experiment, right? And then we may want to repeat that experiment. So, in part, uh, so correspondingly or analogously, we focus on one random variable. So, instead of this, suppose uh, you want to look at uh, a sequence of sequence of experiments which are not independent. Okay, one depends on the previous one in time. 
till now we have modeled only single experiments or repeating it with new random bits right so we would have one experiment in mind let's say tossing a coin you do it once then you do it twice and the randomness is i mean these are you think of them as independent events so that we have modeled but now what we want to do we want to study sequences a sequence of random experiments that may depend on previous outcomes okay so dependent but uh, then we have to study what are the types of dependencies so let us formalize this as a stochastic process so a stochastic process why process because it's not an experiment now we are looking at a bigger experiment that contains many small experiments okay this is what we are doing we are looking at a sequence of experiments so we call it a process a stochastic process is a sequence xt t from some index set i it may also be infinite of random variables taking values in a state space so the values that these xt take uh, we call that universe uh, state space so they are taking values from the same space but these may be completely different experiments and they may be dependent okay so so sequence of experiments we are calling stochastic process and finally this index set i can be thought of as time okay so so which is why i say uh, present or past okay current or the previous there is this ordering so this will be a good way to model many physical phenomena so s may be discrete example you toss a coin every day okay so every i mean the sample space or the state space will remain head tail uh, but but the experiment is you are doing it one after the other and many of these and you want to study how this evolution is happening okay or it could be continuous example uh, stock price
So, again the index set is days, say from now on count the days. Every day you look at a stock price, look at the stock price of some stock, okay, say some software company which you like, you, which you are following. So, now the stock price is actually a positive real, right? It may not be an, even an integer, which is why we call it continuous in this case. Okay, so that so state space remains the same, but as days progress, what happens? It may be related to the previous day, or it may be related to all the previous days, or it may be completely independent. Right? That will be clear from the process. Okay, so what can you now immediately say in a stochastic process? Uh, notice that this is not a big change uh, of uh, definitions. Uh, these kind of things you have already done when you studied conditional probability. So, from that you already know that uh, probability that big X1 is small x1 dot dot big xk is small xk, right? how this probability behaves. So, in this process the first k values are fixed to be this. What is the chance? So, since there is a notion of time here in this process or in this experiment, so you first ask uh, what was the chance of small x1 coming and based on that what was the chance that small x2 came. right? And then based on the previous k minus 1 values, what is the chance that k came? Right? So, note this uh, Uh, this order, right, and you cannot change this order. You cannot ask uh, little x2 or big x2 has happened, and then what is the probability that big x1 will happen? Right, that isn't allowed because big x1 happened actually first.